What the fuck? <laughs> Excuse you? What is up, YouTube? We are here with another React Sunday. So if you want to see any of these videos reacted to live, just join us on every Sunday. And if you can't make it, no worries. You can always post in the React channel on my Discord if you want to suggest anything. Enjoy the video and remember to like, comment, and subscribe to feed the algorithm and help me. An angry old veteran with 700 red uh, coats. Yes, the official state hero of Massachusetts. Today we're talking about Wah. Samuel Whitmore, quite possibly America's first anti-hero and the most gangster old man of all time. But first a word from our sponsor because this the video brought to you by Operation Good Boy. They make all kinds of dog like good boy. from supplements to treats to toys. To oh, he has a dog. Bags. And Mushu absolutely loves the Made in America treats ready to eat. Jay treats Bob. ready to eat. Boot camp bites. Oh. All over. All over. <laughs> Come on! You gotta, you gotta do the whole thing. You gotta do the whole thing, dude. Roll over. Roll over. Roll over. You're making me look bad on camera. Roll over. Oh, he's such a cute boy. So yeah, check him out at OperationGoodBoy.com. Use the code QUACK15 for 15% off. That's Let's such a good video. fucking... Right, Whitmore. We don't know much, but here's what we... That is such a good advertisement for a sponsor. That is like pure... Ah, uh, also such a good name for a brand. <laughs> All right, back to Samuel Whitmore. You know, he was born in Charlestown, Massachusetts in 1696. From there, he goes dark. We don't hear from him until 1721 when he gets married to his wife, Elizabeth Spring. Then he goes dark again. There's nothing of him in the historical record uh -huh. until 1744. At the age of 48 years old, he would fight in King George's War. And during that war, he held the rank of captain, leading an entire platoon of dragoons during the siege of Loisburg. If you don't know, dragoon is just a fancy word for cavalry, so think of like Malfoy's dad from the Patriot. Same thing. So that's cool, whatever, but here's the important <laughs> part that nobody else ever brings up. Like I said, he's a captain, which is a way bigger deal than most people make it out to be. And here's why. There's really only two ways that you can become an officer in the British military at this point in time. Way number one, you are born into a wealthy mm -hmm. British aristocratic family and daddy's got a lot of money. That's like 95% of the British officers at this point in time. Yeah, it makes or sense. Way number two and way way less likely you are a complete badass doing gangster shit on the regular and they absolutely need you to lead some men given the fact that samuel's just some random colonial that was born in massachusetts it kind of narrows down which category he fell into so he and his men help lay siege to fort lewisburg that goes well they take over the fort from there the war is over so he heads back home to what is now arlington massachusetts For interesting so Basically, the, the dude was so badass that he actually managed to snag a promotion, even though he was uh, quote unquote lowborn for their standards. I wonder how that went with the other captains. I'm sure they liked him a lot. That tends to go very well in history. From there, he goes back to doing seemingly the only other thing he's good at, because I'm not kidding you, this guy does two things his entire life. He plows <laughs> stuff, and he fights wars. When he's not fighting wars, he's back at home, plowing his fields, and plowing his wife, because this dude has ten kids. I am not- Excuse you now? <laughs> so th what the guy does is fuck his entire life? Damn. Not kidding you there was only two things on the historical record that even proved that this man existed for the next 10 years one is the sheer amount of birth certificates where he is listed as the father i mean the mother is always his wife he's not cheating on his wife it's just they're having a bunch of kids and second the most favorite detail of this entire story when he came back from war he had a very very decorative ornate almost gaudy French officer sword covered in gold and rhinestones and jewels and all kinds of shit. And it became his prized possession that he would show off to all of his buddies in town. And when they would ask him where on earth he got that, the only thing he would say is, and I quote, the previous owner died suddenly. <laughs> Fucking, I acquired it. All right. You know, that is actually the absolute best way in which you can possibly keep the mystery around something. Oh, thank you, cat. Like, it, it's a good way to pique curiosity and hold it and like have people always wonder and make up stories because then the gossip travels, right? And then more people think about it, more people, and they get more and more insane. So you end up hearing all sorts of shit that's not true. <laughs>
Oh. All right, so fast forward 10 years. Midnight, come here. 10 years of plowing. <laughs> it's now 1754, and Attila the Whitmore over here is approximately 58 years old, and the French and Indian War breaks out. Now, does Sam have to go fight this war? Absolutely not. He is a 58-year-old man in the 1700s when the life expectancy is 60. He should be killing over any minute now, but he also mm -hmm. has 10 kids, so he's literally like, um, <laughs> honey, I gotta go beat up the French again. Okay, bye. <laughs> Oh. If you don't know, the French and Indian War is basically the Kingdom of France versus the British Empire, and both sides are backed by different Native American tribes. This is supposedly the war that Mel Gibson's character fought in in The Patriot, and presumably where he got his cool tomahawk from. Now, I know what you're uh -huh. thinking. Did Sam Whitmore get a cool tomahawk too? No, no he didn't. <laughs> but what he did get was two matching dueling pistols that were super cool. And you're never going to believe this, but the previous owner died suddenly. Okay, look, it's not stealing if they don't exist anymore. That's just the rules, I guess. So Sam and his men beat up on the French yet again. He acquires some fancy dueling pistols and then he heads back home. Okay, Damn. fast forward again. The guy has nice collection. Nine years of plowing. And Sam Whitmore is 67 years old and the Pontiac Rebellion breaks out. Sure. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Does that mean the guy is now a fossil by those standards? Damn he's gonna sit this one out right absolutely not he grabs his french sword he grabs his double dueling pistol how is the stealing of the guy's dead i don't know ask skyrim that's what i asked myself every single time when they did that cat please behave <laughs> this guy is literally absolutely crazy literally all he does is fuck his wife plow the fields and fuck his enemies and steal the guns and have a gun collection apparently <laughs> his musket and he heads off to war yet again so he goes he fights in that war for a little bit comes back home at which point he decides that he's going to get involved in politics so oh along the line, boy he starts rolling around in the political circles he finds himself at a fancy dinner party and there's this guy there that's running for house of representatives and his name mm -hmm. is john vassal and he represents everything that sam hates sam is a small town farmer that's just trying to plant his crops and bang his wife and this guy is like the big powerful merchant out of boston the big city running the ports making all this money he wants to get into office to make laws more beneficial to him so he can be rich and sam is just trying to get by so at this dinner party <laughs> sam who's not scared of anybody informs him hey by the way you're no better suited for office than the horse i rode in on by the way my horse's name is nero he's parked out front and he's not worth five pounds which i'm not an expert in translating <laughs> old-timey colonial speak but it sounds Jesus like he's saying Christ. you're not worth a horse's ass go fuck yourself at which point John Vassal gets very upset and decides that he is going to sue Sam for public defamation for the price of uh -huh. 1,000 pounds, which is a shit ton of money back then. So that the is a shit ton of money. So finds out about this lawsuit and they all show up to court to actually watch the trial because Sam represents that grizzled old man that's just saying what's on everybody's mind, but nobody else has the balls to say. And he goes in and basically turns this entire trial into the roast of John Vassal. Ends up winning. <laughs> Sam doesn't get sued. At which point he slaps him with a counter lawsuit on the spot and ends up counter suing him for $200 and wins. So that what the heck is that, man? <laughs> Oof, that's gonna sting. That kind of launches Sam's political career. Fast forward again. Two years. 65, and the British Empire has been fighting France for quite a while and it's getting expensive. They need to make more money and the best thing they can come up with is the Stamp Act. Basically, they're going to charge the colonials a tax on every single printed piece of paper that they come up with. This is like the modern day equivalent of if every time you made a phone call, sent a text, or visited a website, you had to pay a tax for it. And people are absolutely outraged. And Honestly, I can really appreciate the fact that he broke that down for modern terms because i was about to ask is that kind of like the newspaper anytime you you write a poem or like a book or anything you you use paper every time you use paper you gotta pay seems like damn and Sam is infuriated. I mean, from his point of view, he's been fighting the French for the British Empire, and now he's going to have to pay an extra tax just for doing it. He is so mad that he ends <laughs> up becoming a hardcore revolutionary. But he's also like a 70-year-old man, so he's mostly just serving on committees being like, hey, 
maybe America should be its own country. We shouldn't pay so much in taxes, yada, yada, yada. Fast forward again. Eight years of really in strong plow. Samuel Whitmore is a 75 year old man and the British government has just rolled out their new and improved strategy for making even more money the Tea Act. Yeah, they're going to start taxing the oh. importation of tea, which will go down in history as one of the greatest ideas of all time. Now, at this point, Sam is serving on a committee representing his hometown of Cambridge, which would. I actually know the Tea Act. <laughs> that one I do know. Later become known as Arlington. And that committee mm -hmm. sends a response to the British government in regards to the Tea Act that basically says, fine, if you're going to charge us more money, we're just not going to buy your tea because, and I quote, if we fail to assert our rights, we will dwindle into supineness. Now, like I said earlier, not an expert in translating old timey colonial talk, but it sounds like Sam and his committee just told the British government that we're not going to buy your metric leaf water because we're not going to let you guys fuck us. That's why. At this point, pretty much everybody in America is pissed off. They start smuggling tea to avoid taxes. The Boston mm -hmm. Tea Party happens December 1773. From there, people just start stockpiling guns and gunpowder and supplies getting ready for war if one should break out now fast forward april 1775 general thomas gage is appointed the military governor of massachusetts and he will be residing in boston which has been turned into a british military stronghold at that point general gage decides hey you know what <laughs> everyone's like fuck this shit man we've been we've been here dealing with all sorts of nastiness fighting for you and now you even want our tea to cost extra oh heck no we're not gonna stand for that oh he's doing a lot of plowing and he's getting really old what I'm going to get proactive. I'm going to stomp out this whole rebellion talk right here and right now. I'm going to take 700 men, an entire regiment, and I'm going to march them out to Lexington and Concord. While they're in Lexington, they're going to arrest those stupid, annoying revolutionaries, John Hancock and Samuel Adams, and then they're going to continue marching to Concord where they're going to burn down all the stocked up military supplies. So the British military that sounds like a plan. preparations for a huge movement, at which point revolutionary spies find out and they decide to let everybody know. And when I say they decide to let everybody know, I mean a silversmith from Boston by the name of Paul Revere is going to take off at midnight, ride through the entire countryside, going house to house, telling everybody that the British are coming. And what the hell? That is insane. <laughs> it's like, how do you let everyone know? Just send one dude on a horse go going like an ambulance. They're coming! They're coming! Hide! <laughs> Jesus Christ. And guess whose house is between Boston and Lexington? Sam motherfucking Whitmore, that's who. I'm not shitting you. It is like 99% sure that Paul Revere showed up at 78 year old Samuel Whitmore's house sometime in the middle of the night and was like, <laughs> hey, just letting you know, the British are coming. At which point he's like, get off my lawn. <laughs> and presumably Paul Revere is like, okay, whatever, I gotta go warn everybody else, and Samuel goes back to bed. That morning, April 19th, 1775, the British are marching and they're almost to Lexington, and they are cut off by 77 Minutemen, led by a man by the name of John Parker. John Parker orders the Minutemen to, quote, stand your ground, don't fire unless fired upon, but if they mean to have war... Let it begin here. So the British roll up with 700 trained professional Jesus soldiers Christ. and tell these 77 Minutemen, literally farmers that just picked up whatever guns they had around and told them, disperse you rebel scum. At which point the Minutemen are like, nah, we're good. We're going to stay right here. And so are you. And that's exactly what happens. They just stand there staring at each other from across this field. They had the stand off. Not knowing what to do because he has to get to Concord to get rid of these supplies because those were his orders. <laughs> but he also doesn't want to open fire on these guys because that will mean the start of the Revolutionary War. Yeah, that, that's such a conundrum <laughs> to be in. <laughs> you literally, you're stuck. You're stuck in a standoff going like, um... I need orders. I, this is way above the pay grade, sir. <laughs> Excuse you. Let me guess. Samuel comes up and shoots him. So they just stood there, seemingly forever, in formation, ready to throw down, waiting for the other guy to make the first move. And suddenly, from the American side, a gun goes off. Nobody knows who fired. Nobody knows why. Uh. But this was the shot heard around the world that would start the American Revolution. And for all we know, it could have been some old farmer that just dropped his gun. <laughs> Ha ha ha!
<laughs> From there, all hell breaks loose. Both sides fire on each other. Eight American Minutemen are killed, and the British advance towards Concord. The surviving oh. Minutemen take off to go tell everybody that the Revolutionary War has officially begun, as the British spend the next four hours searching through Concord, gathering all the military supplies and lighting them on fire. Everybody in the surrounding Jesus area smells the smoke from the burning supplies, and they think that the British military is burning down the entire town of Concord. Because of that, two thousand Minutemen show up to fight back. At which point, the British are like, "Oh shit!" and they. <laughs> this is like so wild. Oh, I bet it was Samuel Whitmore just firing his gun on his lawn. <laughs> That's tied in this entire thing. But it's crazy just how news went and how everyone just assumed that the war started because of the things getting burned and how out of proportion and blown out. Oh, this was Jesus Christ. They start retreating. They run across the bridge and start ripping the planks off of it as they go. At which point, the 2,000 minute men and 700 British soldiers fire upon one another from either side of this bridge as the British continue to retreat. The British now have to march 18 miles back to their military stronghold <sighs> in Boston in their stupid high-vis red coats, and every single American with a gun between there and Boston is taking pop shots at them from the wood line. During this retreat, oh. 26 red coats go missing, 175 are wounded, and 73 are killed, and three of them at least are from Samuel Whitmore. So we cut back to <laughs> They had to retreat through an entire section of people hating their guts. Oh man, that plan went spectacularly well. Jesus Christ. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. To Samuel Whitmore, he's 78 years old, chilling at home, presumably plowing something. What we don't really know. <laughs> or and he just hears gunfire going off in the background, and it's getting closer and closer. And then he remembers, oh, that fucking kid woke me up last night in midnight, told me the British were coming. Maybe that's what's going on. So he goes, he grabs his fancy French officer sword, both of his dueling pistols, and his musket, and he goes out to the main road that the British would be marching past, and he's gonna stand by the stone wall next to the main road and just wait for the fight to come to oh, him like Jesus the complete badass that he is. At this point, all the younger Minutemen are running up to check on this old man like, hey... What, what are you doing? You shouldn't be out here. And if you are going to try to do this kind of stuff, at least go out in the wood line or in like a second story window to hide yourself like the rest of us. See yeah, like, bro, I get that you're badass and, and like uh, slightly potentially senile at that point, right? But um, at least use covert tactics. <laughs> at least hide your goddamn ass. Oh God, he is insane. Don't get yourself killed. To which Samuel Whitmore responds, and I quote, if I can only be the instrument for killing one of my country's foes, I shall die in peace. Which I think we can all agree is gangster as fuck. At this point, this man is Damn. literally the living and I can respect of that. man's strength. He's just that old grizzled veteran Viking that's got one more fight left in him and wants to die in battle so he can go to Valhalla. So he stays there, he loads his musket, he loads his pistols, and he waits, and he waits, and finally the British come marching right down the road, dead at him. As they get close, he crouches down behind the stone wall with his musket and waits until they get to point blank range, and that's when he pops up over the wall, aims his gun, I said get off my lawn now, and fires, immediately killing one red coat on the spot, drawing both of his pistols, killing two more red coats, drawing his sword, and charging into over 500 soldiers on his own. <laughs> that is so insane! That guy literally wanted to die in a blaze of glory. Absolutely mad lad. But hey, I can totally respect the fact that he was like... He had a vision, he had a thing, his family was okay, right? Like, he did his job, his kids are probably pretty grown up at this, that point. Um, that, you know, I, I can understand. He is then immediately shot in the face. He falls to the ground and is somehow still alive, so he reaches to grab one of his guns and start reloading it, at which point the British run up 
and stab him with bayonets somewhere between six oh. and thirteen times. Apparently, after Jesus the first Christ, time, they all kind of blend together. He is then clubbed in the head with the butt of a rifle and left for dead as his body lays there, mangled and lifeless, as the British continue to march through the town on their way to Boston. Four hours later, the townspeople notice that his corpse starts moving. So they pick Samuel up, they get him over to the doctor, they alert the family, the family shows up to the doctor, at which point the local town doctor, Nathaniel Tufts, is like, the dude is 78 years old. He wasn't prepared to handle a fall down the stairs, let alone getting stabbed 13 times and shot in the head. Okay, like there's no way this old man's gonna make it. But like I said, his family members- What the fuck? The guy is still alive? fucking leaveable man! Start showing up, and guess how many direct descendants Samuel Whitmore has at this point in time after all that plowing? Go ahead, give it a guess. Say it in your head. 14. Okay, that's your number? Okay, he's got 185 living descendants. What the fuck? <laughs> Excuse you? A uh, 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 hundred and how many? <laughs> Excuse How? His kids had how many kids? He literally made a pl as a platoon. He made like an entire squad. He he, he built his own army. This f this freaking guy was like, what the fuck? Okay, he's got five generations beneath him. He's got kids, grandkids, great grandkids, great grandkids squared, and great grandkids cubed. A hundred eighty-five <laughs> people showing up to the doctor like. Hey, save grandpa. At this point, poor Dr. Tufts is like- I <laughs> They could create their own little town called the Plow Town. <laughs> Imagine being the doctor and you have almost 200 people that are like, Hey, save gramps, please. Dude's gonna die, but I'm not about to tell 180 grandkids that, so I'll try my best. So he does what he can, he bandages him up and sends him home with his family, and they take care of him for the remainder of his days. And when I say the remainder of his days, what I mean is, let me check my notes real quick, uh, I mean that he passed on February 3rd, 1793. This motherfucker lived for 18 more years and passed away at the age of 96. And times he got shot in the face he went to free wars he was clubbed in the head and he he lived another 18 years and he lived a total of 96 years i uh, this is plot armor no this is plow armor this is literally the guy's a horse i don't fucking know he is the plot armor <laughs> Man, that is crazy. People that these days don't live that long. Like, he, he's the anime protagonist. That like that that's literally it. He's an anime protagonist. And to commemorate Samuel Whitmore, there's actually a monument where he made his last stand. Huh, you said that he was oh. 78 during his last stand and 96 when he died, and that clearly says that he was 98 when he died and 80 during his last stand. Why are you so dumb? Huh. Okay, look, I understand your point, and I also can bring his last 90 where he made his- Alright, near the spot Samuel Whitmore, then 80 years old, killed three British soldiers. He was shot, bayoneted, beaten, and left for dead, but recovered and lived to be 98 years of age. <laughs> and I realize the irony because this is literally written in stone and I'm telling you that it's wrong, but it is wrong. That is the only source that <laughs> says that he was 98 when he died and 80 during his last stand. Every other source says that he was 78 and 96. This has been proven to be false multiple times, but they don't want to change it because the monument's already so old. So 
Yes. There's no point to change it nowadays. Let's be real. Actually zoom in on the house in the background. That's Samuel Whitmore's original house where he lived his entire life. And it's still around today as a historical site in Arlington, Massachusetts. And that monument is in the front yard. So if you're not picking up what I'm putting down, what I'm trying to tell you is in conclusion, this has been the story of America's first and oldest gangster, a 78 year old grizzled veteran that woke up on the first day of the American Revolutionary War and decided to casually go three and O while telling the entire British empire to get off his lawn. Thank you for watching. Quite Best literally, yeah. Go buy some merch over like, the guy, it was bang. very close to his house, funnily enough, that road. I, the I guy was excited for a future t-shirt design. I can see it was now. really cool. America's original gangster. Get off my lawn. Sam get off my lawn. With like. <laughs> yeah, I think a get off my lawn t-shirt would, would sell really well. <laughs> Especially if you put the, the, the musket uh, with the two pistols as well, right? <laughs> as a thing. He made a last stand in his house. Yeah. That was badass. Honestly, very gangster. I, I can agree with that. I shall forever remember him as Samuel Whitmore, the guy who plowed his way for life. <laughs> Such a cool and badass video. Oh, thank you so much for recommending it. For me and my cat. Peace out, YouTube. <laughs> much love. Bye.